A year ago tonight, one of these young ladies was lost in the trackless wilds of the frozen Yukon. What is your name, please? My name is Helen Clavin. My name is Helen Clavin. My name is Helen Clavin. Only one of these young ladies is the real Helen Clavin. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth. And here sitting in for vacationing Bud Collier is our host, Robert Q. Lewis. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome once again. I'm delighted to be back with you, panel. I had a lot of fun last week, and I will try to repeat it this week. Good to see you all. Hello. Nice to see you all, too. To Tell the Truth Tonight is brought to you by Woolite. Safely soak sweaters clean in just three minutes without stretching or shrinking. Okay, let's see how we do tonight, panel. Will you open your envelopes, please? Follow along as I read. I, Helen Clavin, was the only passenger in a small plane when a howling storm forced the pilot to crash land on a mountaintop in the Canadian North Woods. The temperature was 45 degrees below zero. We had no blankets and only the shattered cabin of the plane as shelter. After five weeks with no rescue in sight, the pilot and I struggled to a clearing large enough to enable us to stamp out a huge SOS in the snow. Long after we had been given up for dead, a passing plane spotted our message. We were rescued the next morning. Our ordeal had lasted 49 days. Signed, Helen Clavin. Panel, here are three very charming young ladies. They all claim to be Helen Claiborne, who spent 49 days in the frozen Yukon. Let's start this round of questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you. Uh, uh, number three, who owned the airplane that, that you flew in? Ralph Lorries. That was the name of the pilot as well, number three? Yes. Number two, did he own the plane? Yes, he did. Number one? Yes. Uh, number one, how much previous flying experience had he had? Oh, he had been flying for a number of years. What was his actual occupation? He was a mechanic on the Dewline. On the Dewline, thank you. Uh, number two, where did you go when you uh, were rescued? When I was rescued, I was taken immediately to Whitehorse. Uh, number three, thank you, number two. Number three, uh, where did you go after you, wh where did you finally end up to recuperate and rest? In New York. Where exactly? Thank you. Tom, time's up. Uh, let's turn to Peggy, our ski expert. Thank you. Uh, number one, how much food did you have in the plane? We had a little bit, which we stretched out for nine days. Uh, number uh, two, where are you from? Where do you live? I live in Brooklyn. Uh, number three, where do you live? Uh, Brooklyn. Uh, number one, do you as well live in Brooklyn? Yes. Uh, number two, who met you at Whitehorse? What member of your family? Number two? Oh, no member of my family met me. Oh, number three, when were you re where were you reunited with your family? In New York. Uh, number one, did you suffer any injuries from this uh, was, um, exposure? Yes, I broke my left arm in the crash, and my right foot, which was crushed in the flight, froze. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you. Orson Bean. Yes, Bean. number three, uh, as a victim of uh, many days on the frozen tundra, did you suffer any uh, injuries other than number one has recounted? Just some cuts. Bruises. Just cuts, that's all? Nothing else? No other permanent injuries? Yes. Number two, I believe I vaguely remember reading something about this. Did, uh, was there something about the religion of the pilot that sustained you? Uh, yes, there was. What he was, was there? He what was, was of the Mormon religion. Number one, do you agree with that? Yes. And number three, do you agree with that? Yes. Number three, again, uh, uh, how, what did you eat after the nine days? Nothing but snow or what? Well, we melted the snow and, and we had some toothpaste, which we ate. Number one, do you agree that no member of your... Sorry, Borson. Kitty. That's where toothpaste and fills the two. cavity. <laughs> 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 number two, uh, who went to this clearing in the woods first from the uh, plane? From the original, uh, yes. after the crash? Uh, we both went, oh, you, no, the pilot went first. I well. see. Number three, how were you transported to this clearing? 
school, we walked down to the first grade. Number one, do you agree you walked? We struggled. But you struggled? Walking. Uh, number two, uh, what sort of um, uh, shelter did you use? You had no blankets. I remember reading this story was absolutely extraordinary, and I congratulate you on your survival. <laughs> well, we lived in the plane at first, and we stuffed all the cracks, and we tried to use the, uh, some, a canvas that we had wrapped around us. Thank you. Number three, did you... Oh. Time so is up. Yes, time is up. It is a fascinating story, but now the time has come to vote, panel, and without consultation, once again, will you please mark your ballots, selecting either lady number one, number two, or number three. And as is usual, the team of challengers will get $250 for each incorrect vote. It's a tough one. I, I don't know myself. I'm curious to see. Shall we uh, see how you voted now? Are you all set, Peg? Yes. Yes. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number three. I remember at the time thinking that, uh, in addition to the fact that it was a really game thing for her to do, I thought it was kind of wiggy, and she looks kind of, uh, you know, with it, so I voted for number three. All right, Peggy? Well, I voted for number one because she was very terse and uh, matter-of-fact in her answers, and I thought she could take care of herself in the tundra. All right, Orson. <laughs> Number one uh, has a wiggy quality, as uh, Tom pointed out, it would be necessary to have to have started the trip. But she also has a very, uh, an air of serenity that I think would be the result of having lived through such a thing. So I voted for number one. All right, Kitty. I voted for number one. Number three, uh, they all gave marvelous answers, but number three wasn't sure about the injuries. And I do think I remember that there was a problem with the leg. And also, I think number one has a rather haunted look from this experience. <laughs> Well, let's find out now, shall we? <clears throat> let's find out which of these three young ladies is the one who spent 49 days in the frozen Yukon. Will the real Helen Claven please stand up? That is amazing. I, d I didn't know either. I thought it was number two. Isn't that awful? Maybe it is. Ms. Ask her. Ms. Clavin, congratu <laughs> yes. Ms. Clavin, congratulations to you. Thank you. And may I say that uh, Helen Clavin has described her uh, harrowing experience in a recently published book entitled, quite appropriately, I think, Hey, I'm Alive. Mm -hmm. Now let's find out about the other two ladies. Number one, you got three votes. Tell us about you. Well, my name is Carol Sussman, and I do research in biochemistry at Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons in New York. <laughs> yeah, what about that haunted look? <laughs> All right, number two, tell us who you are. My name is Mary Lou Presick. I just came back from Africa uh, serving with the Peace Corps. Oh. Oh. May I say you two imposters were very, very good. There have huh. been, as you see, a total, of, there has been a total of three incorrect votes, which means a total of $750, which should delight you from Woolite. And incidentally, on your way out, ladies, there's a gift box of fine products from the makers of Woolite for each of you. Thank you so much, and good night. Okay, now let's have our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Robert Crowningshield. My name is Robert Crowningshield. My name is Robert Crowningshield. All right, panel, will you please listen as I read? I, Robert Crowningshield, am a gem detective. I test and identify precious stones for insurance companies, jewelers, and various law enforcement agencies. I am director of the New York Division of the Gemological Institute of America. I have examined pieces of glass worth nothing, diamonds worth $100,000, and once a million dollar string of pearls. On one occasion, I had to tell a lady the sad news that her expensive so-called emerald was nothing but two pieces of quartz stuck together with green cement. On a happier occasion, I was able to inform a cab driver that out of a group of rings he had bought for $300, one single ring was worth about $60,000. Signed, Robert Crowningshield. <laughs> Here they are, panel three gentlemen. They all claim to be Robert Crowningshield, gemologists. Let's start this round with uh, Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> 
Thank you. Uh, number one, would, do you believe that industrial stones are going to take the place of natural ones? I mean, they can make emeralds today with enormous heat and so forth. Number three. You asked me number one. I'm so sorry. Oh, um, I wasn't listening too closely because oh, you asked you? that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, were you listening? Were you listening, number one? Uh, yes, but or you were looking me. at him, so not too closely. <laughs> Number two, uh, what about a big stone like the Kohenor diamond? How many carats would that have? The Kohenor has about 108 point something. Thank you. Number three, can you name me a very famous star sapphire? Oh, I've been to the museum um, to see the, um, um, I think it's the Black Princess, oh uh, no, the uh, Black Midnight Star Sapphire. Thank you. Thank you, Kitty. <laughs> Tom. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> Uh, and, and number two, what is that jeweler's uh, eyeglass called? A loop. Number three, how do you spell loop? Uh, L-O-U-P-E. Oh, is that nice? Mm -hmm. uh, number one, do you know Harry Kaplan? Do you no. know Harry Kaplan? Is he a friend of Irving Weinspies? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a very famous jeweler. Number one. <laughs> no, no, I do not know Number Harry. two, do you know Harry Kaplan? No. Number I three? I don't. Well, you sillies, you should. Uh, number one, what does your name stem from, may I ask? My name is an English name. It's English in derivation. What does it come from, number two? Nothing but We may never know, Tom, um, but... All right, Peggy Cash. Peggy. Number two, what is a registered gem? Exactly what it says. A gem that has been registered uh, with a certain society, depending on... Um, number three, is there such a thing as a perfect emerald? Uh, depends on your description of the word perfect, but um, perfect emeralds perfect. are um, uh, characteristically uh, full of flaws. Ah, uh, thank you. Number one, where did the cab driver get those rings where, what, for $300? <laughs> he found them in the back of his taxi cab. It says he bought them for $300. Oh, number two, it says he bought them for $300. Was it a particular shop? I'd like to know it. Uh, we are not authorized to really give it away, you know. Oh. He, he did buy them, though. Right. Uh, number three, Sorry, Peg. All right, Orson. Number three, how much would two pieces of quartz stuck together with green cement be worth <laughs> if, they were, if it was well done, you understand? <laughs> A little bit? Uh, they are uh, sold as an imitation stone. And they're worth something. $25, depending... $30. They have to be... $30. Uh... Number one, where is Irving Weinspar's jewelry shop? Here in... <laughs> The Manhattan branch, you don't Next know? Next to Harry okay. Kaplan. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, uh, Stealthy Steve and the Great Blue Diamond was a book that uh, haunted me in my childhood. Do you know what the Great Blue Diamond was? The Hope. The Hope Diamond, indeed. Hope diamond. Number at the street, the, uh, the, the uh, $60,000. What did the cab driver do with it? I feel that this is relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Salted it away, I suppose. I don't know what he did with it. Time is up, panel. Time is up. Well, there you go. This is another tough one, I think. No consultation. Please indicate on your ballots whether you approve of number one, number two, or number three. Okay, everybody said. What's the matter, Peg? You, you made a terrible mistake, teacher. I just teacher. thought of something that I should. Oh well. The die is You cast. scared the chickens. I <laughs> thought you were having an attack of something. No, no. Just an attack of the wrongs, maybe. Well, let's see. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I, I hope this is honest. I just realized you said no consultation, and I actually consulted with myself before I voted. And I voted for number three, and at which point Peggy screamed so loud that I realized I'd made some dreadful mistake. <laughs> I can't wait to find out what it was. <laughs> All right. Peggy, what was your... Uh... Well, I voted for three. But you know something? I think loop is spelled L-O-O-P in my detective no, story. No. Well, anyway, I voted for three. Oh, sure. Well, because he did buy, number one, it said he bought those things here in the, uh, in the thing. All right, let's, let's uh, Orson, what about you? Number three, I had great trouble naming a famous sapphire, which only, only one of us fools can do. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wrong. Uh, You're Kingfisher's <laughs> wife, I believe. Number one, uh, 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 Miss uh, uh, read his own uh, thing uh, here and said that the cab driver found the thing. And number two, knew about Loop, so I voted for him. And he has a splendid mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two for most of Orson's reasons. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There are the votes. It'll be, again, I think, rather interesting to find out which of these three gentlemen is the real gemologist. Will the real 
Robert Crowning Shield. Please stand up. Oh, it is. No. Ah! <laughs> oh, you take back that screen? It took years off my life. <laughs> You see, Peggy, you worry. Yes. And he tracked my screen. Yes. I... Why didn't he know about the star sapphire? I don't know anything. He didn't. Well, name. You asked for a name, uh, oh, Kitty, he and he real... did not know the name. But we thank you. You fooled them beautifully. Uh, number one, let's find out a little bit about you. My name is Jim Brosnan. I'm a stockbroker with the Lee Higginson Corporation. Here. <laughs> well, number two, you and your lovely mustache fooled Orson and Kitty. Let's find out who you are. My name is Bob Hurst. I'm a sales representative for Lufthansa German Airlines. Well, there you are. There have been, as you see, two incorrect votes, which means a total of $500 from Woolite. Incidentally, gentlemen, on your way out, we'll find a gift box of fine products from the makers of Woolite for each of you. Thank you so very much, and good night. Let's see how you do now with our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Hans Sigris. My name is Hans Sigris. My name is Hans Sigris. Once again, panel, please listen as I read. I, Hans Sigrist, am driver and guide on a sightseeing bus. I do all my driving in Europe. I've guided my passengers through 16 countries and estimate that I have logged over a quarter of a million miles. One group of Americans had such a good time on one of my tours that they decided to show me the United States the same way I showed them Europe, by bus. As a result of their generosity, I have just completed a cross-country bus tour from New York to California. Along the way, I visited many of my ex-passengers. My most intriguing experience was a one-month stint as a mechanic in a typical American service station. For the past eight weeks, I've been on a real busman's holiday. Signed, Hans Segrist. <laughs> all right, panel, here are three fellows. They all claim to be Hans Segrist, European bus driver. Let's start this round with Peggy Cash. Thank you. Uh, bus driver number two, uh, where is Vaduz? <laughs> Austria. Uh, number three, do you, ag uh, do you know where Vaduz, do, do you agree with that? Yes. Um, number one, what do you need, what paper do you need to take your bus from one country to another? Number two? Number one. This is, this depends from country to country. Uh, number two, uh, what kind of a driver's license are you using in the United States? Uh, I'm done driving in the United States. Oh, that's know. right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Number three, what though. kind of a license do you use driving in Europe? International. Uh, Number one, does an American have to have an international driver's license now in Europe? Going over to Europe and driving in Europe? Yes. I wouldn't know for sure about that. I don't think so. Thank you, Peggy. Orson. Yeah, number one, uh, which uh, bus line in America has uh, uh, powder rooms right on the station? Powder room? Well, it's a euphemism. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, I, <laughs> no. I never go. So you don't have to get off the bus at every gas station. I, I never go to the powder room. I don't know. Oh. He doesn't go to the powder room. Oh, I see. Room. All right. <laughs> Number two, uh, why does, uh, w when you get off at one gas station, what impels you to stay there and be a mechanic for eight weeks? Well, it's not an impulsion. It's just that uh, this was for a change of stay uh, for a month in the... What made you pick that gas station? Why did you like it over the Because others? I have a friend that I knew from Switzerland, you know. Ah, I uh, see. I see. Number, uh, number one, no, no, number three, uh, uh, what country was your home base in Europe? I come from West Germany, Hamburg. Hamburg in Germany. Number one, how... Orson, thank you. Kitty Carlisle. Number one, where, what, board, what border is Domodossola on? Domodos Salah is Number two? not on the border. Number two? <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, I'll accept that. Number two, what is the capital of Albania? Number two. Uh, no, I do, don't drive the, uh, the eastern states. We don't go to the eastern you country. Don't. We don't Number go. three, what is the capital of Iceland? Iceland, I just landed on, uh, on airport. Thank you. Number one, 
What river? That would be quite a bus trip from the continent. <laughs> Number one, what river flows into the Lake of Geneva? The uh, Rhone River. The what? Rhone. Thank you. Thank you, Kitty. Tom Poston now. Thank you. Uh, number one, say your name again for us, please. Hans Siegrist. It's so funny because you say Hans. I thought it was always Hans. You know the story about the two little Dutch boys playing on the dike? One pushed the other one in and said, look, Ma, no Hans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number one, I would like to ask where you are from. Where's your home? Switzerland. Oh, from Switzerland. Now, number three, may I ask you why you picked the station you did to, uh, to be a filling station operator? What do you mean? How did you... Well, number two said his friend owned it. How, did, how come you took this particular service station you did to work? Oh, well, I just was uh, like to know how there's uh, American working in the Hazelin station, you know what I mean? To lo look at difference in working process and just pick a space. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Tom. Thank you, gentlemen. It's time now to vote, if you will. And please mark your ballot. This is a tough one for you. For either number one, number two, or number three. Are we all set, panel? No. No, says Kitty. I'm Kitty really wants to get you. one. She's sure upset do. that she hasn't gotten how one yet. How would you tonight. know? I don't know how you'd know, Tom. I don't know. How I'll tell you, you know? the truth. Are we all set? Yeah. Okay. Tom, uh, how did you sort of guess, I guess? I guess sort of guessed on number one. I like a guy that gives, when in America, he says his name American. Hans, that's it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank I you. thought it was number one. Well, I voted for number one, although if you were driving a lot of Americans around, you should know what the powder room is. But, ah, but, but yes. the dues is in Liechtenstein, number two and three, not in Austria. So oh. I voted for one. All right, Orson. Well, I didn't count that because I didn't know. So I voted for number two because I felt that uh, he was kind of a charming fellow that a bunch of Americans would invite to America, you know. It's not right. everyone that gets invited over here, friends. Okay. <laughs> Kitty? Well, I voted for number three because I don't know where Dues is, but I know that Domodossal is on the border because they knock on the train at, in the middle of the night and say, Dwan, I... <laughs> 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 Let me, let me. <laughs> so it's number one. I don't know. All right. All right. Listen, I'm telling you. Wait a minute. I am also a referee on this program, I think. The votes are in. Let's find out before we start arguing which of these three gentlemen is our real European bus driver. Will the real Hans Siegrist please stand up? What? <laughs> Moment. We'll have no East and West to tell the truth on this program. <laughs> Just to set the record straight, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Segrist is a bus driver and guide for Gateway Holidays Tours. You've been a lot of fun. A lot of fun, sir. <laughs> I can say now, so. Now, then, number two, let's find out about you. Who are you and what do you do? Well, I'm the owner of uh, La Potinière restaurant in New York City. Oh, I've been in there. <laughs> number three, let's find out about you, sir. My name is Walter Rogen, and I'm a uh, gym instructor in private studio in New York. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. Well, there have been uh, two, two incorrect votes, which means a total of $500, gentlemen. And incidentally, on your way out, there's a gift box of fine products from the makers of Woolite. Thank you so very much, and good night. The name of the owner of La Potinière restaurant here in New York is Georges Ray. He forgot to introduce himself. <laughs> I have had a ball with you oh, for two it's weeks. Really We've wonderful. Loved you. Well, I've enjoyed being here. But of course, be back with you all next Monday night. Uh, meanwhile, I'll be with you on the daytime show for the rest of this week. Uh, this is Robert Q. Once again, reminding you for Woolite, as Bud Collier always does, to tell the truth tonight. To tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotton
Tell the Truth has been brought to you by Dristan Nasal Mist, the decongestant nasal spray for relief in seconds from sinus congestion and head colds to stress. Dristan Nasal Mist. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program was recorded.